One of the tools we use a lot when we're out in the field is a handheld or a helmet mounted thermal. So today what I wanted to give you guys is just a quick couple bullet points as to why we consider a handheld thermal monocular an essential tool as you get out into the darkness. It's almost a guarantee that anytime we head out into the wilderness at night, we are going to have some sort of thermal monocular. And there's a couple reasons why we decide to do that. Before I even talk about that, there's a couple models that I have in front of me right now. I do want to say that this is not an all-encompassing video. I only have the MH25 as well as a Helion 2 XP50 on the table here. These do not even come close to showing the broad array of different models that you can get into with handheld thermals. But this video is just to open your eyes to a concept. So I wanna share with you that concept. When we head out in the darkness, a lot of folks think that the only thing that they need is binocular night vision or PVS-14. But the reality is as soon as you get out into the darkness, you notice under analog night vision that things that are camo in the day are camo even better at night. And that's especially true with analog night vision because it's not showing you different colors. It's not showing you all of the different contrasts that we see in our everyday life. So if you think about going out hunting for deer or coyotes or something like that, you've probably realized at some point that you've stumbled across an animal that you didn't see until it moved. And if it wouldn't have moved and you're walking along in the wilderness, you probably would have walked right past it without even seeing it. Night vision is much the same. So even though you have a superpower, you've got a really cool thing that you can see at night. It amplifies the existing light. And in moonlit or starlit conditions, you can see a lot. The reality is I could wear just the right color t-shirt, the right color pants, and stay perfectly still, and the chances are you wouldn't even see me. And we quickly realized that as we were predator hunting, and we really heavily started leaning onto things like this Helion 2 XP50. So having a handheld thermal in your inventory allows you to have a superpower that night vision just doesn't even come close to, and I cannot express that enough. So the biggest reason why we consider handheld night vision an essential tool is because it's small enough to fit in a pocket or around your neck or in a lanyard, in a backpack, things like that, and you're able to quickly scan an area immediately notifying you through the thermal unit if there's any heat signatures out there. And that is a power that digital night vision just simply cannot match. And there are systems out there that overlay thermal onto your analog night vision. And I'm not saying that that technology will not increase into the future. The reality is at this point with everything that we've used, dedicated thermal units have been outperforming all of that. So I wanna give you a couple things to consider when you're looking for a dedicated handheld thermal. The first is we tend to like having a very low base magnification. And what I mean by that is the thermal is going to come with a base magnification. It could be 1x, 2x, 4x, 3x, whatever that is. So you look through it, it's going to amplify or zoom in on that image X amount at its base level. And then from there, there's digital zoom that you can perform. Now, every time you zoom in digitally, it's going to actually reduce the quality of the image. And you guys have seen that with your cell phone. If you pinch and zoom in, it just doesn't look that great. And that's why new cell phones come with multiple different cameras on the back because you only can zoom in so much digitally without wrecking the image. But the reason we want a low base magnification is my interest personally is to scan as much area as quickly as possible. So for those of you that don't necessarily care about that, but you wanna see really far with your thermal monocular, you would tend to want maybe a 2X base magnification, maybe a three or four X base magnification. And then you could zoom in to say maybe 16 times zoom digitally on that particular unit. And like I said, there's a whole vast array of thermal monoculars out on the market that are gonna give you all of the capabilities that you want. So base magnification is my first consideration when I'm looking at a thermal monocular. The second is getting the best core in your thermal monocular that you can afford. If you have the budget, we always recommend minimum 640 by 480 core inside of your thermal. And that's going to give you the resolution and clarity to not only detect what you're looking at, but be able to pinpoint immediately exactly what that thing is. There's other lower end units like the Pulsar XM30s 
that have a 320 or 384 core and a 320 or 384 core, it's all right, but it's just not going to do the things that a 640 core will do. Now, if your budget says absolutely not for a 640 core, you, know, you can't spend three to $5,000 on a thermal inocular, but say you could spend about $1,600, a 320 to 384 core thermal is going to show you that something's out there. It's going to point immediately and say, hey, look, right over there, there's a thing. I don't necessarily know exactly what it is, but I can tell that something's out there moving. And then you could use other supplemental infrared with an analog night vision or a weapon mounted thermal scope to actually identify exactly what that thing is. So I don't wanna talk bad about a 320 or 384 core. They just don't have the clarity of a 640 by 480 core. So if you can afford that, I would definitely recommend doing that. And then you also have to answer the question, what is the best size for me? Maybe a 640 core like this Helion 2 is a little bit big for what you're trying to do, and you want something a little bit smaller like the MH25. The other side benefit of something like the MH25 is you can also helmet mount it. And that's actually my personal preferred method for having a thermal in the field. I like to have it over my left eye on a bridge with a PDS-14 on my right eye. And the reason for that is because I like having the ability with a PDS-14 to aim with a laser, with an illuminator, to aim passively through a red dot. But I also like being able to rely on the thermal monocular to be able to identify things immediately in the field and also make sure the shots I'm taking are safe. That's the other benefit of thermal. You can not only see the heat signature of the thing that you're looking at, but this shows you your terrain. It shows you everything that you're looking at. A lot of people have their experiences with cheap FLIR units, like firefighters would use or things like that, or somebody might go into a building with one of those FLIR units to try to figure out where your building is inefficient and where you're losing heat. Those don't even come close. They're not even in the realm, not even close to the realm of what we're dealing with here. The MH25s and similar monoculars like this are so good that I can run duels on a Mod Armory bridge and I can walk and function and move just like I would with a PVS-14. And that's amazing. So guys, if you're looking for that extra superpower where you want to be able to detect heat and defeat other animals and even people's camouflage, having a handheld thermal in your kit is not a bad idea. I'm not advocating that everybody in your crew has one. If you have the budget for that, yeah, that'd be awesome. But if you have a group of guys that are training regularly, it doesn't hurt to have a handheld thermal monocular in your kit. So guys, if you wanna see all the models that we have available, check out the link in the description below. It's gonna take you over to our website. You're gonna be able to see all of the thermal monoculars that we have on hand. Just keep in mind that monoculars and thermal tech is constantly changing. So no matter when you're finding this video, the units on the table may be actually obsolete at this point, but we still are keeping up with all of the most up-to-date units that are available in the market. Check out our website for all of that, all the specs and all the pricing. And guys, the only thing that I'm asking for you other than that, if you like this video, if you find the stuff that we do helpful, please hit the like button, leave us a comment below, and then subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also send this video to a friend or family member who's into nighttime hunting or nighttime shooting because this video is probably gonna help them out. We appreciate you guys and we'll catch you in the next video.